We're thrilled to have you here today for a special screening of Amazon's Emmy-nominated series, Transparent, followed by a Q&A with SVA alumna, Zachary Drucker, associate producer, consultant, and actress on the show. I taught Zachary as a senior at SVA. She was a brilliant, prolific uh, photographer. I followed her as she pursued her MFA at CalArts. When I was LA, in LA after that, she took me to a downtown Trinity nightclub in LA called Shits and Giggles. She was the door person. Not long after that, I was in LA and I saw her video work presented as part of the uh, Hammer Museum Made in LA Biennial. And then right after that, I saw her video work in the PS1 Greater New York show. And then she and Reese Ernst presented photographs from their five-year um, archive of photographing each other during a relationship um, at the Whitney Biennial, the last Whitney Biennial. And that work has since been presented in Europe and Canada it's quite a trajectory since 2005, and we're very proud of her. Today we'll be screening the first two episodes of season one of Transparent, as well as a special behind the scenes look at the show, and an episode of the accompanying series, This Is Me, directed by Reese Ernst, which was also nominated for an Emmy this year. But first I'd like to welcome Duana Butler, of New York Women in Film and Television, one of our partners for this year's festival, who will introduce today's short films and filmmakers. So please welcome Duana. Hi, um, we're really excited to be here. My name is Duana Butler. I'm the program coordinator at NYWIF. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with New York Women in Film and Television, we're a membership organization. Of 2,000 members, we're part of 40 chapters worldwide, and we focus on um, celebrating women's achievements. We advocate for equity for women in the business. Um, we also um, preserve women's films, which is really important. And our events and our panels throughout the um, year um, really kind of help support our career development and networking and just kind of building bridges amongst um, women in the business. Um, again, we're really excited. This is our second year partnering with SVA for the film festival, and you know we really look forward to it. It's been really strong um, programming, and we're just really glad to be here. So um, for the second year again that we've been here. So before we get to Transparent and Zachary, we're also really, really pleased to present two short films by SVA alumni. First up will be Away by Elisa Bates, and that will be followed by How Not to Get Raped by Kat Del Buono. I'd now like to welcome Elisa and Kat on stage for a brief Q&A with your moderator for this afternoon, SVA student, Samantha Matola. Let's give them a warm welcome. Um, so first, I want to thank you both for being here. Um, we are so honored to have you. Um, okay, so I'm going to start off with a few questions. Um, for Kat, first, um, on your video, How Not to Get Raped, how did you decide to create this video? Well, it started from seeing um, a list of like how-to advice for women that colleges were putting out that were absolutely ridiculous. I mean, one of which was like, urinate yourself or vomit to keep the rapist away. They were serious and the list went on and on. So I started calling the website looking for all sorts of advice on how you can avoid getting raped, which is a whole other story. Um, and I decided, let, well, I'm going to make a video where someone acts out what they're saying we should do. So. I mean, it just was ridiculous. 
Okay. Um, and for you, Elisa, how did you decide to make this video? Um, well, this film came about, it was actually my, my thesis project as in my, uh, the MFA design program that I was in. And um, the area that I was focusing on was first the beach, then Rockaway Beach, then women surfing at Rockaway Beach. And it sort of became evident that the best way to showcase this was to do it as a film. You had to show the, like the emotion, and you had to show the footage of the waves and the beach, and show Rockaway. So um, that's how it came about. Because I'm, you know, prior to that, I'd never made a film. So I was in a design program. Oh, so, wow. yeah. Cool. yeah. So you used your design skills that you learned to make the video. I did. Well, I had been working as an art director um, at some record labels, and I'd had experience um, art directing still photo shoots, and I, you know, I figured. If I know how to do that. I know how to put together a, a still photo shoot production. So, you know, with a little help from some advisors and just asking various people um, that I knew or friends of friends, I just put together a small team of people to help me and awesome. I did it. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, okay, back to Kat. Um, <laughs> do you think that going to SVA and living in New York had an influence on this video? I th maybe a little bit. Um, <laughs> I, part of, some of the stuff I learned at SVA, um, one of which was something Charles Traub said, which kind of blew my mind, when he said, I want you to think about where you fit into the art world. That seems so big to me. The world, the art world, I'm just like in this program, where do I fit into this program? No, we had to like think beyond where we were and beyond ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. like how we're gonna reach to a larger audience. So part of that made me start thinking about, OK, so what I make can influence, you know? And how am I going to do that, you know? So I guess that's part of. Yeah. And one other thing someone said, I can't remember who it was, said something about some, some work I was doing that seemed a little preachy. And they said, you know, you're not going to reach people that way. So that made me think about. What's another way to do this? Mm -hmm. And that's how humor became an avenue to get people to pay attention instead of just shutting down yeah, when so they that's started saying, you know, this is wrong and da da da. So that's why you took a more like satirical route with this. Absolutely. It, in a way, it felt like it was like obvious it would be that mm -hmm. just because of the ridiculousness of the the advice. Yeah. So it just seemed like it was just a natural progression. But at the same time, it did that as well. It like used humor instead of just pointing out what's bad yeah. as a way to reach more people. Yeah. So. Awesome. Um, and for you, um, what, I guess we had talked about this a little bit, what, what inspired you to create this specific film? Like, do you have surfing experience? Experience in surfing? Yeah. Well, you know, I've been a beginner surfer for years, like learning to surf for years, <laughs> and it's not easy. <laughs> um, so. You know, I'd always been a big fan of beach culture, and, and my husband has surfed his whole life, and so I've been around, and I have friends who had surfed, so I was, there was definitely an interest in surfing, and the reason why I focused on the women surfing was because there was so much, it was like the sort of the beginning point of Rockaway exploding, mm -hmm. it was a few years before Hurricane Sandy hit, and um, there was so much in the, in the press, in, like in the newspaper, and films made about men surfing there, but there's nothing about the women, and women had been surfing there as far as I could tell, documented like since the 60s. Actually, one of the women in this film um, has been surfing there since the 60s when she was a kid. So um, yeah, I felt that the story of women surfing at Rockaway should be told. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so, so are you a professional surfer now? God, hell, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> I am still learning. Um, you know, it's, it's really difficult to surf in New York, especially Rockaway. The waves are, are really fast. Um, it's steep. The water's really heavy. It's much easier to surf in places like Barbados, which I, I went to last fall, which was amazing. And, you know, even the West Coast is easier. But you know, Montauk is a little bit easier than Rockaway. And, but um, yeah. I'm not, and I don't expect to be that, you know, to that level. I just, I'm happy to get out there and paddle out and catch some waves and stand. And have it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. 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 And is there any reason why you chose to do like winter? I noticed that it looked very cold. It, 
That just happened to be when I had to shoot it. Okay. As far as the you know the school schedule, like yeah. when I started shooting versus when it had to be done by. Okay. I think if I was able to, I would have loved to have shot the whole year round to get yeah. a really full picture of the surfing out there. But you know. but it looked beautiful anyway. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and your video is showing um, at the SVA Chelsea Gallery on the west side. Yeah, I think um, it's closing today, today's though. Today's the last day at <laughs> 6, so if you all want to go, make sure you go right after this yeah. um, and check it out. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Bull. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. I'm Adam Natali. I'm the director of SVA Theater. Uh, thank you. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, the many films we just showed you. Uh, I'd now like to introduce SVA alumna Zachary Drucker. Uh, she's a co-producer, consultant, and actress on Transparent. Uh, Zachary is an independent artist, cultural producer, and trans woman who breaks down the way we think about gender, sexuality, and seeing. She has performed and exhibited her work internationally and in museums, galleries, and film festivals, including at the Whitney Biennial, MoMA PS1, the Hammer Museum, the Art Gallery of Ontario, and many more. She's actually going to be Skyping in from Los Angeles on the eve of the Emmy Awards, which are tomorrow, um, and which we're going to show across the hall to conclude the After School Special Festival uh, tomorrow at 8 o'clock, so please come back to that. Um, Transparent is nominated in over 10 categories this year, and the, uh, the web series, This Is Me, which you showed, uh, which we showed earlier, was also nominated. Uh, you can root on Zachary and her colleagues tomorrow, uh, as I mentioned, across the hall. I'd now like to welcome Zachary, live from L.A., and uh, welcome back, Samantha Matola. And just a note, once Samantha does a few questions and we open it up to the audience, we're going to have you, uh, if you want to come to this microphone over here so Zachary can see and hear you, that would be great. So if you, you're on that side, you might want to just come around this way. So Samantha will let you know when. Samantha, go ahead. Um, okay, so what sort of responsibility do you feel that your show carries with the current rise in representation of the transgender community? <sighs> Transparent? Yeah. And also, yeah. Also, this is me. If you wanna include that too. Yeah, I can tell you guys about both of those things. Um, I started working on Transparent two years ago when Jill Soloway was developing the pilot. Uh, when she was writing it, my collaborator, Reesern, and I were among the first people on the project. Um, and I think that it's sort of a testament to Jill's feminist uh, filmmaking model and method of inclusion. Um, trans people throughout the history of film and television have been relegated to the roles of psychopaths, serial killers, um, victims on CSI, <laughs> sex workers. Uh, if you can even call that representation Right, that's sort of where we're coming from. Um, we've been comic relief, been butts of jokes, you know, it's a long history of uh, male actors and comedians cross-dressing in cinema and television. Um, so that's kind of where we're coming from, like the, the, dark, the dark ages, let's say. Um, I think of transparent as the beginning, like as, as zero, as the, the beginning of a more positive politic of representation for trans people. It's the first time we've seen a, a trans character rendered in, in full complexity. Uh, it's the first time we've seen a trans character situated in a family, in, in a family narrative. Uh, trans people otherwise have always been represented as sort of satellites um, out there on their own. So it's, I mean, been an incredibly inspiring two years, I think, for, for the trans movement in general. We've kind of made this huge leap forward. Um, and from my vantage point, it's sort of hard to separate that larger cultural movement um, my my role on transparent because that's where I'm physically situated. Um, you know, a big part of what I do on the show is help 
kind of inform the politics of representation. Um, we bring a lot of trans people behind the campus, so we have a trans inclusive workplace with as many folks um, in as many departments as possible, which I think is one of the things that really helps the authenticity of the narrative. Um, as well as casting as many trans people as possible. I mean, we've all been left out of our own storytelling so long. Um, I think that Hollywood is a huge diversity problem. Um, and that's true of women being excluded, people of color being excluded, um, queer people, trans folks. Um, I think we have a long way to go, but it's my hope that with Transparent, we're sort of setting a new standard for inclusion and storytelling and a more authentic rendering of a trans person's life. Um, and then on This Is Me, we, we made that really quickly. There's five episodes, and I always watched the one that I'm in, which was the one that I was most involved in, but I produced all five of them. Um, you can see them on whitebee.tv, which was Jill's, Jill Soloway's um, web channel. Check them out. Um, that was a, a real pleasure. We made it between season one and season two. And we sort of took all of these characters who exist on the periphery of Transparent. Everybody is in, everybody's in This Is Me is in Transparent somewhere, whether it's in season one or season two. And sort of put them in the center. And created like a you know narrative documentary style, but one in which people were sort of able to tell their stories. Um, and it was made with entirely a trans and gender non-conforming crew behind the scenes. So it's kind of a, a revolutionary experiment. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Uh, one more thing before we open it up to the audience. I just wanted to congratulate you on being nominated for Emmys, um, both with Transparent and This Is Me. Um, and want to remind everyone that th we're playing the we're watching the Emmys live tomorrow in the other theater at eight o'clock. Um, how does it feel to be honored with those nominations? Incredible. Uh, I mean, I feel honored to have the opportunity to work on those projects um, and to have had you know enough access and the tools to help create them and construct them. Um, to be nominated as was a tremendous surprise. I mean, for this is me especially. I kind of feel felt like the little train that could. Um, and I still not convinced that, that many people have actually seen it. Um, but that's maybe a little lie that I tell myself to preserve any feeling of anonymity that I have. <laughs> um, and transparent, the fact that it's been received so well, I think is a testament to the amount of love that went into its synthesis and its creation. Um, at its core, Transparent is made with a lot of love and a feeling of family. And I think that that's reverberated. Um, and I hope that that's what viewers get when they watch them. Well, congratulations again. Um, Thank you. If anyone has any questions you would like to ask Zachary, you're welcome to come up to the microphone uh, and ask away. Or just comments. Or, or just comments. Revelation. Realizations. Hi. Hi, what's How's your name? name? My name is Jake. Um, I'm a third year animation student here at SVA. Um, and I've also. I wish I could be there with you guys. <laughs> this is like. Really, very. Clearly, I wish that I could be there. <laughs> You're so doing fun things in LA. It's cool. <laughs> 
Um, while being here, I've also held the position as a co-president of Queer SVA, which is the um, LGBTQ uh, campus group. Um, cool. That yeah. didn't exist 10 years ago. Yeah, isn't that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> we do fun things. Um, but one of the challenges we face in the uh, student group is that trying to include every letter on the <laughs> LGBTQIA <laughs> spectrum. Um, and I know that Transparent, which I'm a huge fan of the series, and it's so cool to be here with you. Um, part of what Transparent does is it really includes every aspect of queer culture that is just not represented. Um, and I was curious if you have any advice for, as the student organization, what we can do to make it completely inclusive and fun for educational and everything for everyone. Hmm. That's a great question. I think that there, you know, the thing that I was kind of trying to address with this is me and my sisters is a feeling of community and a network. And I think that it's the only antidote to a world that doesn't really have a viable place for us. Um, and, you know, I think that we have to carve out that place and we have to do it through solidarity with each other. Um, so I think that just by having a student group and by initiating conversations um, to understand each other better and to expand our culture's notions of difference. I mean, that's what art making is, right? I mean, uh, at, at its best, we have the power to change hearts and minds. And I think that happens in all areas of culture. Um, the thing that's been so cool about my humble beginnings at, at SVA is in the photography department um, is that it prepared me with these tools to sort of take on a larger industry. Um, and I think that Hollywood, Hollywood in particular, you know, influences eventually legislation, like once it's influenced the masses, right? Legislation is kind of like oftentimes follows entertainment and culture. Um, so it's my hope that by working on these projects um, that we'll eventually have a safer place for the LGBTQI, that suit, the queer community, <laughs> um, with more legal protections, with uh, access to housing, employment, uh, with, you know, legitimate protections against violence and hate crimes. Um, I hope that with more visibility it becomes less stigma. Um, I think it's just our responsibility to continue living and to do what it takes to survive and um, one day you'll be changing the world too, Jake. If you're not already. Yes, thank you so much. You're such an inspiration. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be seeing you in Hollywood soon. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's so sweet. Hi, how are you? My name is Rima Dibien and um, I'm a huge advocate. Um, so I think you're gorgeous. And oh, I thank just you. I just like, okay, thank you. And, and, um, they, they compliment. Um, <laughs> and uh, to be honest, um, I, I, um, I have like the, the opposite of Joel Soloway. So when my mother came out, I was like, uh, 14. And there's a woman in the audience who took me in. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was a hard, it was a hard road, and it's hard to tell your story. So mm -hmm. everybody has different um, ways of trying to tell their story as dynamically and clearly as you have. So I applaud you for that. Um, so um, I guess my question is, how can I take my theater piece? Because I'm a theater major. I went to Carnegie Mellon and. Um, how can I take my theater piece 
and break down all the categories so that they no longer exist. That's my dream. That's my vision. Mm. Um, so that's, I mean, it's a huge road of not, um, I have a little part in the piece and everybody thought I was transgender and I was so fucking proud. I was like, yeah, I support. So do I take my part, cut it out and put a transgender uh, actor in there? Do I, how do I create more inclusive, embracing, supportive, um, proactive, imaginative, uh, I guess, create more to my piece, which is gonna be in the village. So, I mean, it's just a, a little road. Um, but it's going to be, yeah. yeah. How do I do that so that people see that, you know, my passion. You could see Jill Sol Solway's passion. You can see it on the screen. You can see how it's shot. You can see it how she casts. You could see how um, the storyline, brilliant writing. I mean, all of that is everybody's dream. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that we can only do so much. I mean, we can only do... We can only affect like the. We can only use the tools that we have, and we yeah. can affect the immediate community. And like I think my style of making has always been to speak to my enabling community. And what I mean by that is the people who are directly around me who inspire me. And I think that the more specific you can be with your message, and your story, the more universal it is. Yeah. Which is really antithetical to the whole, like old way of entertainment and culture, which was about diluting things and reducing it to the lowest common denominator. Um, I think that the thing that's so incredible about this moment for me is that you know trans folks have been so excluded and um, left out of their storytelling, and we've been so disenfranchised. Um, just in terms of hard, uh, tangible things, uh, access. Um, but the fact that allies like you are showing up and helping, and Jill are showing up to help tell the story and spread the message is the thing that's really moving us all forward. Um, I think uh, the trans movement as you know, not only an extension of the LGB, the gay rights movement, but also an extension of feminism and of you know, hundreds of years of women fighting for equality. I think that all of these things, you know, we all have a part in that, you know, yeah. regardless of what kind of body we're in. Um, so I think telling your story and being a good ally is, you know, really powerful. And all you can hope for is to one person. Yeah. I just don't want to do, um, I want to do just a little bigger piece as opposed to like a Kaja Fall or, you know, I want to do a, a bigger piece of, so it's hard to, to, I have to weave it in, so. But, you know, I have a vision, and you're inspiring so many people, and, you know, your work is, and so is Jill's, and um, I just, you know, I have another story to tell, and you guys, thank you for being here so that you can. Yeah, are you kidding? Thank <laughs> you for telling your story. Thank you well, for, I mean, it's. It's like you're affecting everybody in the room that you're standing in right now, too, by just telling your story. So I don't know about that, but thank you. All right, well, thank I do. <laughs> well, keep, keep going, and I'll keep watching. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Who else? I think that's all the time that we have okay. for questions, but thank you, and thank everyone for asking questions, and I hope everyone enjoyed. Thank you, Zachary. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, so honestly, have, thanks for watching. Have fun at the Emmys tomorrow.
Ángel. <risa>